Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Last time we set up a prologue where we reviewed molar mass and the idea of mole mole ratios. And what we'll do now is we'll put it all together and do a full stoichiometry problem. And then we'll do some extra stuff beyond that. Again, there's nothing really new here if you've been following all the lessons. We're just going to put it together uh, and, and tie the idea of, of balanced molecular equations into the world of measurement that we can do in the laboratory, typically in grams, but as, as the lessons go on, we'll show you a lot of other ways to spin this out. So here are the steps to stoichiometry. Um, again, always summarize your relevant information in a word problem, uh, pull out what's important, put down question marks of what you need to solve for, and then ignore the rest, and you're going to save a lot of time. Steps two and three, balancing, uh, the, the ba balancing the equation and figuring out the relevant molar masses can really be done in whatever order you want. Just get it all done before you start the problem. Think of a cooking show. There aren't any cooking shows where uh, you know, they're starting to bake something like, oh, I forgot eggs, and then you follow them out to the store to get eggs. You know, uh, Have everything ready to go so that when you set up the factor label problem in step four, uh, you can just plug stuff in and then get your answer. Uh, before you punch your calculator in, I definitely estimate your answer. That's always a valuable skill uh, to be able to estimate, and that way if you make a mathematical mistake, hopefully you'll catch it. And we'll show you a way to actually check your work using the law of conservation of mass at the end. So as the characters point out, Remember, it's up to you what order you decide to do stuff in for steps two and three. And, and uh, some people actually do like to do the molar masses first uh, and wait to balance secondly, because occasionally some people like to wrap their coefficients into their molar masses, which is not the correct way to do it. Um, if, you, if you roll a coefficient into molar mass, then technically you have to multiply the molar mass by the coefficient, and then hence they'll cancel out anyway. So always figure out your molar mass under the assumption that you have one mole of something. Um, and, and that way uh, you won't make mistakes uh, and, and try to incorporate coefficients into that. So here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how many uh, grams of sodium hydroxide uh, we will produce from the reaction of 250 grams of sodium and enough water. In later problems, we'll actually have uh, set amounts of each reactant and one will run out before the other. But let's just pretend we had enough water. You threw it in a, in a toilet or a lake or something like that. All right, and so write down your relevant information. You have 250 grams of sodium. We're going to need this molar mass because we're going to have to go from grams to moles, and that's something we can look up at the periodic table later. And in this case, they're only asking you for sodium hydroxide, the grams of sodium hydroxide, and hence we'll need its molar mass too. So we have our work cut out for us. We have a lot of things we have to figure out before we can set up this problem. We'll need a balanced equation. Uh, now, one of the things this problem doesn't bring up is, is what we also produce. So if we're reacting um, sodium metal and water, we produce sodium hydroxide and, 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 yeah, that's right, hydrogen gas too. <laughs> and and if, if you're not uh, sure that, that that happens, just you know look up any video of sodium and water on the internet. And, and the reason why sodium explodes when you put it in water is the fact that it's uh, ripping the water molecules apart and releasing hydrogen gas, which is then ignited at the high temperature of the reaction. So that's what causes the explosion of sodium and water. We can, of course, balance that now if we'd like to. And, uh, you know, some people like to do the mole ratio. I, I, I don't think it's really that necessary. Uh, but what it does is it sort of removes the uh, bias of reactant and product. It doesn't really matter if you're going from reactant to product, product to product, product to reactant, reactant, reactant. Stoichiometry problems don't change. Just remember that conceptually that you're going to consume reactants and you're going to produce products, but the math doesn't change at all. So the molar masses can be looked up off the periodic table or solved. Um, and if you're not sure how to find a molar mass, you can go back to one of my prior videos, and we'll show you how to do that. Uh, but for sodium hydroxide, one sodium, one oxygen, one hydrogen will be about 40 grams. Uh, again, sometimes they'll want you to show the work, sometimes they won't, depending on your teacher. And so let's set up the factor label problem. We start with 250 grams of sodium. We're going to go from a grams of sodium to moles of sodium. We always go to moles. Moles is going to allow you to connect elements to other elements or compounds to other compounds. And so then the second step in this case is the mole-mole ratio. Really that's all stoichiometry is, is a mole-mole ratio. And then, uh, you know, how do you get there and what do you do once you get there? Um, so usually we start with grams and end with grams. But you could have a stoichiometry problem where you have moles of sodium and you're just going to moles of sodium hydroxide. Moles to moles connects different uh, substances. Without it, you can't get from one substance to another. And then once we have moles of sodium hydroxide, we'll feed out to grams, which is what we're looking for in this case. And so we'll throw in the molar mass of sodium. Um, so we have, you know, uh, a little more than 10 moles of sodium based on that ratio there. 
Uh, in this case, it's a 2 to 2 ratio, which means uh, you'll have about 10 moles of sodium hydroxide too, a little bit more. And then we have the molar mass, uh, in this case 40 grams. And so if you do the math, 40 times a little bit more than 10 is going to end up being, in this case, 435.0 grams of sodium hydroxide. And that's it. They all set up really the same way. Um, you, you typically go from grams to moles. Uh, you know, figure out the equivalency between the moles of, of the two substances and then feed back out to grams, typically. But there's a lot of other neat stuff we can do here. Uh, once we have uh, um, you solve for the grams of sodium hydroxide, we don't have to solve for anything else that didn't ask us to. But let's pretend to, uh, that, that they asked us to also figure out how many grams of water were consumed and how many grams of diatomic hydrogen were produced. Well, we have some new things we need. We need the mass of hydrogen. We need the molar mass of, hydro of hydrogen. We need the same things for water. And so we're going to do the same sort of setup as before, same balanced equation. Uh, again, we'll need the molar mass of water and the molar mass of diatomic hydrogen. Again, we'll, we'll avoid too many details there. Um, but, but show the work for that if your teacher wants you to. And we'll start the exact same way. Always, always, always start with the data that was given to you. I know we solved for 435 grams of sodium hydroxide, but if you made a mistake there uh, and you started another problem with that, then everything's wrong. So be careful about that. We're going to, again, once again, go from grams to moles. And in this case, we're going to go to moles of water. So that's where it differentiates. And then, of course, we'll go to grams of water. So it looks very similar with a couple tweaks. It, this also ends up being a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of moles, but this time it's only 18 grams. Uh, and so you're going to end up um, with about 18 over 22, which means this is going to get smaller, about 200 grams, or 196.0. And then we have 250, again, also going to moles. In this case, it's a one-to-two ratio. And then we have um, our molar mass. So we're looking at 2 over 2, which essentially cancels out. So we're taking 250 and then dividing it by uh, almost 25, which means it'll be a little over 10, and in this case, 11 grams of diatomic hydrogen. Now here's the really neat thing, is we can actually check this using law of conservation of mass. This is one of the coolest things about stoichiometry, is we can take, again, the idea of a balanced equation that's in some kind of ratio, whether it's a, it's a molecular ratio or a molar ratio. Um, remember that those are not masses. It's not 2 grams plus 2 grams yields 2 plus 1. That doesn't even follow the law of conservation of mass. But if we convert those mole amounts to whatever the grams are, and, and in this case we, we, we're anchored to the idea of 250 grams of sodium, so based off that we can feed out to everything else. We have 435 grams of sodium hydroxide, 196 grams of water, um, and 11 grams of diatomic hydrogen. And what that's saying is, um, you know, uh, 250 grams of sodium is an equivalent amount to 196 grams of water. And that's an equivalent amount to 435 grams of sodium hydroxide. Um, and that's uh, an equivalent amount to half as much diatomic hydrogen. And look what happens to the masses when we add them up. That's, that's, I think that's, I always think that's neat, <laughs> that uh, we, we've mathematically shown that mass is conserved, uh, theoretically at least. Uh, we'd have to actually do the reaction. Uh, but uh, the mass needs to be conserved to do the law of conservation of mass. And if it's not, then you're missing something in your, in your uh, experimental work. All right? Anton Lavoisier gets a lot of credit for the law of conservation of mass, uh, but uh, Lamont, Lamontisov, uh, uh, also gets a lot of credit. He came up technically with the idea first, or if you can all go all the way back to um, Epicurus, uh, he came up with a similar idea. You know, he, he ran with Democritus and all those guys um, in terms of the concept of the early idea of atoms. And so the law of conservation of mass has been around in a lot of ways, uh, but, but uh, Lomonosov and uh, Lavoisier, of course, really brought in the experimentation to set us up with the modern view of it. And so that's as far as we need to go today. Um, of course, uh, uh, Lavoisier was the only one who got beheaded there, but uh, hey, that's, that's what happens when you're a uh, 18th century uh, guillotine chemist. Hmm? And so uh, that's all. That's, that's, that's a full stoichiometry problem there. Uh, and what we'll do from here on out is uh, we'll show you some of the fun stuff you can do with uh, limiting reactants, percent yields. But, but there's, there's a, it's pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot left to cover with stoichiometry. So thanks for watching, uh, practice some more problems, and have a great day.